good the cfax ak the evil genius here back again making that beautiful boom back gonna do another soulful one today to be honest that's the vibe i'm on at the minute so stick around i'm gonna do try a few new things today gonna do some screen sharing and um, maybe show you a few of my mixing tips and tricks uh, some of the plugins I use. But bear with me as well, just um, a little bit under the weather at the moment. You can hear my voice is going and that. But um, yeah, still here doing what I love. Let's go. So I picked a beauty today, listen. You know when you just hear something, you're like, oh wow, oh wow, I've just got to make something out of that. That's exactly what I felt when I heard this one. So sometimes when you're sampling off vinyl, you're going to get kind of discrepancies. It's it's part of the character um, and often like you'll get crackles, for example, you'll build it into the, uh, into the sample um, and, it, and it might land nicely and it might sound great. Um, other times it might be that you've got a bit of hiss you've got kind of the, the vinyl's a bit damaged so you might have some odd kind of noises coming through in this case it, i felt like the recording was just a bit hot when i was um when i sampled it and um i've got a bit of harshness i don't know if you can hear it through these speakers but hear that top end harshness so later on yeah i'll show you how to deal with um some of that harshness but in the meantime, let's see what the chops are saying. So you can see what I've done. I've pitched some of the samples down. So we've got it down like on the MPC minus 58 here, minus 49. Left uh, this one here just um, just as standard, these three. So let's see what I've got. There's always that one note. There's always that one note that gets me, and I think like that's what I'm going to base this whole thing around. That's going to be my kind of my prominent main little note. So normally what I'll end up doing is starting with a template, then making the melody while the beat's playing constantly, then I'll go back to the um, to the beat and restructure it and rework it so it's not as long winded, but because I'm doing the video, I want to show you like the, the full process, so I'll start with the, um, I'll start with making the beat and then we'll move on to the melody. Got some of my trusty samples. Stay tuned for the sample pack coming. The Evil Genius sample pack will be on the shore soon. So that's a snare I've gone with. For me, I just love that kind of old school reverby hit snare. It's like a block hitting rather than like a snare drum as such. And I've said it before, what I always do is layer up my beats so that I made that snare by combining three or four different um, actual snares in the first place. So if you look here, so my snare is here. You can see, actually, I've got these four snares, pitch that one slightly, the rest are all... Um, at the pitch where I've got the snare from and I've got an extra pad coming through so I've got all of these snares as well these two are, are turned off so I've got one here one here 
and these four. So actually I've got six snares making this one. So I always say is uh, one of my tips is layer your beats, layer your beats. I do the same with a kick drum. I do the same in the snare and I always do it with the hi-hats. Give it, make it mine, make it unique and give it more character. Um, and I like to think that one of the kind of signatures sounds for me is like a hard beat. I like hard hitting beats. Can't do with none of that airy fairy snare drum soft kick malarkey. That's not me. That's not for me. Fair play if that's what you want. But for me, I want that hard hitting boom bap beat. That's what we so got. I've got my kick, I've got my ghost kick, so I can get that nice little that boom bap kind of double double kick. And I've got my snare, so let's go. So with a little bit of tweaking, moving around kicks and what have you, um, this is what I ended up with. So now I'm going to introduce the hi-hats. What I like to do, I always like to vary the velocity of my hi-hats. You would have seen that if you've seen any of the other videos. So we change that to velocity and then we've got see the difference there so what I like to do is um, on the offbeat where there's no other sample so no kick no snare I like to raise the hi-hat so it gives it that kind of nice uh, it just gives it a really good pocket um, to the beat so we'll kind of be like something like that. All right, so we've got all those hi-hats laid, we've got the beat laid, I've done a little bit of tweaking, I've got everything exactly how I want it, so let's see what the, uh, the beat's saying. So I'm going to make this one a little bit differently. Instead of playing the whole melody at once, I'm going to concentrate on the one note that I really like. In order for me to do a little bit of um, tuning. So what we do, we go to 16 levels, we go to tune, and we assign that tune to pad 8. So that anything you play above pad 8 goes higher in pitch, and everything you play um, down, below pad 8 goes down in pitch. So what I mean is, that's our sample. And so for now, I'm just going to play that. go. So 
beats done, melodies laid. Let's see how it sounds. like to differentiate my hook by adding extra layers and kind of just making sure that that eight bar stands out between each verse so something like this So I've been doing this all with just like the dry chops without any kind of flavour to them other than what they came with and a few kind of different pitch moves and whatever. Yeah, chops, we've got... And what I'm going to end up with after I've done a little bit of fiddling around and uh, adding some flavour and adding some plugins and whatever you is. Here. As opposed to So let's jump back into Ableton and have a look at the plugins that I'm using to kind of deal with some of that harshness I was talking about earlier and, and as I say just kind of giving it some extra flavour. So to start with I've got Soothe 2, one of my favourite plugins. I, honestly I use it on everything. Um, it kind of algorithmically deals with, and with artefacts, with issues, with kind of um, with sounds you're trying to get rid of, it kind of works out like, which sounds to bring down and which ones to leave in. So, so it's not like an EQ where it where you're taking out that whole frequency. We're just taking out certain parts of the frequency. So here you can see that we've got um, we've got some just over the 2k mark. We've got the most amount slightly higher um, to deal with that harshness. And what you can see here is where it's pulling down frequencies. So this is where it's pulling down some of the frequencies. So without that. Then I've got a utility going into my fab filter. The reason I've got a utility here is to pull down the gain a little bit before I go into my next plugin because plugins have a sweet spot. Um, in terms of the amount of uh, dB that should be running, like hit, um, hit going through the, the, the plugin, so uh, um, so sometimes you'll see me pulling down the volume after I do something. Um, so the next one I've got here is my Fab Filter um, Pro Q3, probably one of probably the most used plugin out of anything I have. Um, so here you can tell, see I've pulled down a load of bass and I've also um, got rid of some of the top end here pulling down some of those harsh notes uh, here you can hear those like kind of harsh um, those ha that harsh orchestral sounds and I've pumped up a little bit of the mids around 500 and then I've got the Fab Filter Pro MB Again, just using a bit of harshness control. So this is a multi-band 
pulling that down, then we go into the utility again, pulling it down, and then my favourite tape plug-in, the soft tube tape plug-in. And I've added a bit of lo-fi grit and then just tweaked it how I wanted it. So we cut some of the high frequencies. We've got the uh, setting so it's not fully um, active on the sound. Um, just above 50%. And then I've, used, I've gone with this specific um, tape mod module. So that's um, C, and they've just got different kind of vibes to them. Um, different, different distortion uh, amounts. And it's basically to do with the speed of the tape. I've boosted the input, taken down the output a little bit. So yeah. So in this case, this is, um, this is the chain that I've got on my um, on my main instruments. Right, so what I did, a little um, trick here, is I separated out the bass from the main sample. So it was all in one, it all came as one um, one vinyl um, sample. So what I've done here is if you look at the fab filter, I've literally just EQ'd out this portion here. So we've got it from around 34 going up to about 200. And um, what we're seeing here is just just where I've filtered out everything else, so it's just the bass. And that way I can just control how where I want the bass coming in, how much uh, I want to push it, um, and what have you, and just have yeah, just have greater control. So that's it then, people. The beats laid, the melodies in place. I've done my mixing and mastering, all that good stuff. Um, I've uh, arranged the tune just how I want it. Um, got everything, yeah, got, got everything in place. Managed to make it through the video without coughing my guts up because I'm currently ill at the moment. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let's see what I cooked up in the end, shall we? Yes, people, thank you. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Peace.
Bebido.